Welcome to Pavenars, webinars for the pavement community. My name is Andrew Bram, and today we're going to talk about transitioning your mindset to graduate school. We're going to talk about this transition through Bloom's taxonomy. There are six levels to Bloom's taxonomy on the cognitive side. The original taxonomy looked at evaluation, synthesis, analysis, and application, comprehension, and knowledge. In 2001, however, a revised Bloom's taxonomy came out, and you can see there are some similarities but some differences. This time we're going to start at the base, remembering, understanding, and applying, and then moving up through analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So what do these terms mean and how do they relate to each other? Let's work through the revised taxonomy and let's start at the bottom with remembering. Remembering involves recalling facts and there are some verbs associated with this including recognizing and recalling. A couple of years ago I asked my research group to talk about tasks they felt fell under the remembering level and this included creating to-do lists, taking quizzes and tests in class, recalling the fundamentals of information they learned in past classes and the past experience they had in jobs. They talked about some things in the laboratory, for example, how Portland cement will affect different Portland cement concrete mix types. So just saying you have cement type A, B, and C, how will that influence the mix type? Also steps on how to use equipment. And then finally, things like spelling, grammar, and running repetitive tasks. So these are all tasks that we do in a laboratory and work setting at a university. However, when I think of Bloom's taxonomy, I think of this level as your freshman year as an undergraduate. These are the type of tasks that you are faced with as a freshman in your undergraduate bachelor degree. And this isn't a bad thing. A lot of people associate Bloom's taxonomy with moving up and moving to better skills. I don't agree with that. This is a very important skill to have, but the tools necessary to execute this skill are not very high. But as we start moving up the pyramid, those skills become higher. So let's move up to the next level, which is understanding. And this is where you need to give descriptions. Some common verbs that go along with understanding include interpreting, classifying, and summarizing, and inferring, comparing, and explaining. Now going back to my lab group, what are some typical tasks? This includes collecting data, developing project outlines, you need to interpret specification and understand other examples. You need to understand in the lab why tests don't give the expected results. And perhaps if you're working with asphalt concrete, the interaction between the asphalt binder and then the mixed performance. And then also technical components and compiling data. So you can see this isn't just regurgitating and recalling facts. This is starting to move a little more forward. And I see this as some of the skills that you learn in your middle undergraduate years. So when you're a sophomore and a junior. Continuing to move up the pyramid to applying. When you apply, you solve problems to new situations and some verbs associated with this are executing and implementing. And so some typical tasks are keeping a lab notebook. So this is something you have full control over and something that it's up to you to decide what is important enough to put in there and what you should leave out. This involves giving presentations, which are of course more difficult than simply writing something down. You're introducing an interactive component to it. It includes doing tests in the lab and changing your mind based on reflection. So maybe as you're doing a task, you have one mindset, but then thinking about it later on, you change your mindset. Other typical tasks are when you try and think of different solutions in order to obtain better results. So trying something different in the lab in order to get better results. And then finally, fitting your topic into a template and analyzing data. So here are just some tasks that you can perform in a laboratory setting 
and in an academic setting in order to apply in the Bloom's taxonomy. And I feel that this is moving into your upper level courses, your senior level type courses, your design courses, and really where you're taking all the knowledge you've learned your first three years in your undergraduate career and applying those. Now we're starting to get into some of the more higher level of Bloom's taxonomy, and this is analyzing. And analyzing is where you make inferences and you find evidence. Some verbs associated include differentiating, organizing, and attributing. And some typical tasks in an academic setting include analyzing data and writing papers, analyzing test results, and outlining your topics for research. A specific example, for example, in a uh, asphalt laboratory is analyzing the compaction characteristics of asphalt. An MTS is a load frame. So understanding these very complicated load frames that will do whatever you tell them to do, but you need to program them to do certain tests. And then also this concept of cold in place recycling or CIR, which is much different than HMA or hot mix asphalt, but you use a lot of the same tests. So you're using two very different materials in the same tests and trying to understand how they behave differently. And then finally, so if a final task that you can do is looking at a flow of a paper and interpreting data. So when you're writing a paper, there's there's different ways you can write papers, obviously, but you want to have a very smooth and clean flow to it. And a big part of that then is when you get to the end of your paper, the results and discussion is how you interpret that data in your paper. And this is where you're really moving away from your undergraduate and moving into your graduate level because there's no one right way to do a lot of these things. There's a lot of different options and you have to choose what works best for you and what's best for the situation. And that's that's something that can't be taught by doing A, B, and C. It's more of here are A, B, and C. You need to take components from each and figure out what works best for you. And that continues on as we move up toward the top. The second to last is evaluating. And when you're evaluating, you are combining elements in a new pattern. And some verbs associated with this include checking and critiquing. And so some typical tasks include writing and discussing your results and monitoring undergraduate work. So in my laboratory, I always have the undergraduates work directly under graduate students. And this is a great opportunity for the grad students because it allows them to decide what that undergraduate needs to do and how best to leverage that undergraduate's strengths. Other tasks are the TOEFL exam and writing your dissertation. These are very, very difficult things to do, and it requires a lot more than just memorizing a lot of uh, facts and regurgitating them. So some examples in materials, for example, trying to determine what some alternate paths for moisture saturation are, which moisture saturation or moisture conditioning tests are the best, whether you're using asphalt concrete, Portland cement concrete, and then how do you graph that development? How do you explain and tell your story about those alternate paths and perhaps why you chose one single path? Other tasks include a lack of distractions. Um, this is really when you're evaluating things, you need to be 100% engaged. And it's, it's very difficult to do evaluating when there's a lot of things going on around you. So this is kind of a mindset where you know, a computer lab working with a group of people may not be the best time to do the type of tasks and evaluating. And one great example of it is writing a journal paper. And if you haven't written a, a journal paper yet, you are in for a treat. Uh, it is an incredibly large amount of work. And it gets a little easier over time. That's the good news. But writing a high quality journal paper is a lot of work. And you need to do a lot of evaluating during it. And this is really where you get from the master level and start getting into the doctoral level. So the highest level of the academic setting is, is this evaluating. And it really all accumulates with creating. At the end of the day, this is what we're trying to get our doctoral students to do is to create. And this is where we make judgments about information. Some verbs are generating, planning, and producing. And so this is where we need to write proposals. Uh, if you think writing journal papers is fun, wait till you write proposals 
And proposals, they're a lot of fun, but it's completely different. And it's because you're not reporting something. You're trying to figure out what do we need to report in the future? What recommendations do we need to make for a change? And you need to articulate that in a way where people will give you money. And that is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, other tasks are doing your research or developing software for application. So this is where you have to find what you need to do and you need to go out and do it. And if you're making a new test or making a new software, no one's done it before. So there is no, there's no way to do it. You're creating the way. Now, I encourage you to look at different materials. Uh, very rarely do we invent anything completely new, but you can get ideas from different materials, different disciplines. Uh, go outside the box of payment materials and try and see what other people are doing. And this is really where a lot of your deliverables are presentations, theses, and papers. So notice you don't see homework on here. You don't see quizzes. You don't see exams. That's because when you're creating, your evaluations are the presentations where you go and talk to a group of experts and they give you feedback. You write a thesis or a paper that no one has written about before and you will get feedback on that. But that's how we create. And it's very, very exciting. And I think if, as you move up, you're getting more and more excited about what we're talking about, you should be in graduate school, no question, because this is really where all these things happen. And then finally, um, as you're creating, you, you get an ease of writing, an ease of reading, both papers and proposals, things just become easier. Um, the, the first couple are very difficult. I distinctly remember reviewing my first TRB paper and I told the committee chair, like, I don't really know what to look for. But after I read, you know, a half dozen, a dozen, two dozen, I've read hundreds now, you get a little better sense of what to look for and what makes a high quality journal publication and how to read through them more efficiently. But, but as I've alluded to and talked about, this is really graduate school, really with an emphasis on the doctoral level. And this, in my mind, is where all the most exciting things happen in academia. And this creating is based fundamentally on all the five levels before. So this isn't the best. It's, it's not the one that everyone should strive only to do. When you're at creating, you're doing everything below, and those skills are absolutely critical. But this is where I think the most exciting portion is. Now, on a little bit of a side note, the revised Bloom's Taxonomy also has types of knowledge, and they have four types of knowledge. I'm just going to briefly go over these. There's a lot on the web that goes more into them. But they divided the four types of knowledge into factual knowledge, which includes terminology, specific details and elements in producing. Conceptual knowledge includes classifications and categories, principles, generations, theories, models, and structures. The third knowledge is factual knowledge, which includes subject-specific skills, subject-specific techniques and methods, and determining when to use appropriate procedures. And then finally, metacognitive knowledge, which is strategic knowledge, cognitive tasks, appropriate contextual and conditional knowledge, and self-knowledge. So these four types of knowledge are used in parallel with the cognitive skills. So you're using these types of knowledge as you use the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. So they're kind of used together. Like I said, I just wanted to brush on this. There's a lot more out there that you can find, but I, I wanted you to be aware that this existed. But the core of this is the pyramid. The summary of Bloom's taxonomy is remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And it's my perspective that as you enter and go through graduate school, so as you're transitioning from an undergrad into a master's student, and perhaps into a doctoral student, you want to go up this pyramid. And you need those fundamental skills of remembering, understanding, and applying. But as you continue moving forward, you'll do more analysis, more evaluating, and then you'll get to what my uh, most exciting part is, at least in my mind, which is the creating. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.